Um, all right, Mike McGrory. Hey, today I want to talk about you talk about setting up irrigation because we get this question a lot. People will start to accumulate a lot of plants and in, in pots in their backyard, and they're like, "How do I keep all this stuff water?" So then you go online, you Google irrigation, and you get all kinds of options from the very simple, basic to complex. And complex is not what you need, but there are a few things that, that you need to understand about what, about irrigation and water, some basic stuff, but these are the things that people, mistakes that people make, and then it, it really hampers what they're trying to do. So basically, what we do, in, and I'm here in uh, Lake County, Ohio, Perry, Ohio, right here in the Perry, Madison area, we have over uh, probably about 100 wholesale nurseries that take in, I don't even know, thousands of acres, and they have millions and millions of plants sitting on top of the ground in containers. Almost all of them do the same thing. They water them from overhead with whiz head type sprinklers. And I'm going to show you there are two kinds of sprinklers that you can uh, that, that you're going to want to use that are really pretty basic. But anyway, this is kind of like an oversized impact sprinkler. You can buy you know an impact sprinkler head at the hardware store for 11, not 8, 9, 10, 12, 15 dollars. You can buy plastic ones. I've used plastic ones. I've used brass ones. They actually work pretty darn good as far as watering a bunch of containers. So this is a pretty simple option. If you get a small, small uh, impact sprinkler like this, it's going to mount right on top of PVC pipe. And I'm going to take you out back and we'll show you ours our, in our frozen tundra out here in a little bit. But anyway, we're not using impact sprinklers because we're using what, what is commonly called as a whiz head. And this is a very, very simple sprinkler head. And all it does is the half inch pipe fitting, it goes on top of the PVC pipe. And these, when, when this thing is charged with water, this little device in here just spins like crazy, atomizing the water and completely creates a rainy mist environment. All of the nurseries around here use these. So you're gonna, people online are gonna tell you, oh, you should never water plants overhead, you should never water plants at night, you should never, you know what? I've had to water plants at night many, many times because it was the only option I had. So be real careful about who you take advice from. Watering during the day is ideal. Watering at night is not ideal, but sometimes you have to do what you have to do. I've done it and it's never been a huge problem for me. A good time to water is in the evening, that way the water has a chance to soak in, the roots have a chance that before it evaporates during the day, especially in the dead of summer. Ideally, you should, your plant should be just about dry before the sun goes down. But again, for years I used to come home 10 o'clock at night and turn on my irrigation because that was the option that I had. I would run one section at night, run the other section early in the morning. So anyway, this is a whiz head sprinkler head. Very simple, easy to use, they work great. They're probably about 10 bucks a piece. You can find them all over online. Um, I would, yeah, I, I would just Google whiz head sprinkler and see if you can, there, there's, I don't know how many different manufacturers that make a sprinkler head that looks like this, but there's nothing at all complicated about it. They actually do a pretty good job. Um, so basically, but what happens when people water, with water, when you're irrigating, Volume is more important than pressure. You want as much volume out to where your plants are as possible. So one of the things that you want to do is that when you, most people have a three quarter inch water line in your house. From that three quarter inch water line, you want to run at least a three quarter inch line out as far as you can. You can even upsize it one inch because well, I did that in my other place. I had a three quarter inch line coming off my pump. I upsized it to one inch because when you're pushing water through a long pipe, there's this thing called friction loss, so you lose a little bit of that volume because of the friction against the pipe itself. So with friction loss, a one inch pipe is equivalent to a three quarter inch pipe. Now, if you're an expert in this stuff and know more than I do, then please, right here on the blog, post anything you know about this. What I'm trying to tell people is that you don't have to have drip irrigation or all kinds of spaghetti tubing going all over. That's not a bad thing. It's not for me. It's too complicated for me. I do everything with overhead water so I can turn it on and forget about it. But uh, some people where you're really trying to conserve water, all that stuff works. But this is, this is what all the nurseries around here use. And I base everything that I do on what they do. They're experts at this. They've been at it for 100 years. They know what they're doing. So when you're doing irrigation, you want to start with the largest size pipe you can 
and then step down as you go out if you have to. You don't have to step down, but the further you go out, the one thing you never want to do is start with a small pipe and then step up to a larger pipe. Always start with the largest size, step down, step. So what we do, the, the outlet on my irrigation pump is inch and a half. So I have an inch and a half pipe coming out of the pump and I run inch and a half all the way out to the end of the plants, which is, I don't know, probably three, four, two, two, three hundred feet, I don't even know. But anyway, it's a long way. And then off of that, so that's inch and a half PVC going out, then off of that I run one inch PVC over to my sprinklers, and then half inch PVC up to these whiz head sprinkler heads. So all the way out, I'm starting out with inch and a half, and I step down to one inch, and then I step down to, in, to half inch going up to the sprinkler head. So that's what's important. Always step down the further away you get. Never go larger. Now, one of the mistakes that people make is they buy quick couplers for their garden hose. I suggest that you do not do that because those things have a have a small opening and they restrict the water flow. This is a Y connector. We are pretty much forced to use this during the summer because on one side of this we, we run into our propagation area and on the other side of it we have a garden hose that we use for just general stuff. This one is made by Green Thumb and what I liked about this one when I picked this up is that the openings in these valves are actually pretty good size. So when you're buying any kind of device like this, make sure you look inside because some of them really restrict the flow of water. So if you put something like that here, everything from here on out is going to be restricted by this device that you put in there. So if at all possible, don't use this device. Just if you have, if you, you know, if, if you got a residential property, you're running 5 8 inch garden hose, then, then try and run 5 8 all the way out into your sprinkler heads. Try not to put devices in there like Y connectors that are, that are going to reduce that flow. If at all possible, one thing that's really inexpensive to run way out like this is plastic uh, well tubing, well pipe tubing. It's real flexible, uh, very lightweight, cost effective. It just clamps together with hose clamps. You, so you can run a one inch all the way out. So if I had a three quarter inch line coming into my house, I would probably try and run a one inch line out as far as I needed it and then start breaking off of that with one inch lines and then you can start stepping down. So anyway, this is kind of what I'm showing you is to start out with something that's larger and then when you have to step down, don't ever step up. So this thing goes all the way out and steps down. This is my little sprinkler stand and then Amber thought I drew a dandelion, is that what it was? So I drew a picture of Amber standing under the sprinkler and she likes my drawing because I said, she said I make it look, she looks skinny. So anyway, <laughs> this is, let, now let's go outside and I'll show you like in real time what we do here. It's frozen, everything's frozen and snow covered, but anyway, let's go bear it and I'll give you a kind of a hands up. All right, so this is a, this is a small impact head that we had. Actually, I, what I did is I took a nursery container and filled it full of concrete and rocks and just stuck a, PVC pipe in there and this thing comes out the side to hook to a garden hose. Anyway, this is an adjustable impact sprinkler so you know we use these around here once in a while if we got an area to water or if we have plants set up out that we have out like in a display area for sale where we don't normally have irrigation set up we use these things. So over here is an inch and a half line. Um, this is the inch and a half line. This is our pump house right behind me. So this is the inch and a half line that leaves the pump house and of course Everything is frozen. So that's inch and a half PVC. That goes all the way out. Um, again, you can see the, the line goes here. And uh, there's a lot of uh, straw and donkey manure. Until you're cleaning the donkey pen. Hey, guys. You guys want to be on the movie? Come here. Come here. What, huh? All right. All right, so that inch and a half line comes from here, and it actually goes almost to that building. And I don't, I don't know if you're going to be able to see the video, but you can see some of those whiz head sprinklers. We're going to go over here, and we'll take a look at the whiz heads. All right, so here's a whiz head. And basically, all I do is I've got the inch and a half line is over there, so I run a one-inch line over, and the one-inch line comes down here. And then this, actually I use three quarters, but you can use three quarters or half inch, whatever you got, and then put the whiz head on top of this. 
Um, a lot of times I'll put a valve here so I can turn off individual sprinklers. Um, in this particular case, we run this whole section at one time so I don't really need to turn them off independently. And then I just drive a, a regular lightweight fence post in, take electrical tape and wrap it up to keep them steady. So basically it's, it's pretty simple stuff and this works great. It, you know, we turn it on, let it run 45 minutes or something or 25 minutes, whatever. And uh, this thing, it, it, if you see, maybe, I don't, if you can see, where, where do we have, we had that crazy video that you guys did with the, the uh, Mondays without Mike and yeah. you guys are running through sprinklers and right you can see the spray ones. pattern yeah. and it really completely covers um, everything. So anyway, I, I hope this is helpful to just give you an idea how simple your irrigation can be and what we use.